Okay, welcome everybody to another session of the Festival of Learning at District 5180 for District Governor-elect Desiree Wilson's year, which is coming up quickly. Uh, tonight is our session on young professionals. And to lead that session, we have from the Point West Rotary Club, Samantha Hoshida. Now, Samantha has been a member of Rotary Club of Point West for eight years. Wow, time flies. And during this time, she has been on, on the board of directors of, on various district committees and was the district rookie of the year in 2014 and district Rotarian of the year in 2019. Woohoo! Uh, Samantha is currently the district awards chair. Oh, I've been there and done that. Your busy time is right now, girl. <laughs> and uh, she's also the chair of our young professionals group since 2015. Uh, outside of Rotary, uh, Samantha's worked for the City of Sacramento for over 15 years. She's the current chair of the Leadership Sacramento Alumni Committee. Ooh, that's that's cool right there. And a board member at Breathe California. Fantastic. So please, everybody, uh, welcome Samantha Hoshida. Thank you, Bill. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here. Um, I will say, um, I was telling everyone on beforehand that I had thought this could be a little interactive if there were young for, for, for young professionals on the call, but we can totally uh, pivot the conversation, right? I know that Bill Bowen's on here so he can add um, some young professional input, um, but we can also have it be a more candid conversation, right? Because I'm guessing that those of you on here are wanting to know how to either attract or keep young people in your clubs. Um, so. The slides that I have are relatable either way. Um, I will say I went to the Young Professional Summit that was done by our zone back in 2014, um, which was fabulous and kind of, it gave me a different way of thinking about young professionals and our role in Rotary. Um, I will say that as somebody who works in government work and in education, I've never really thought of myself as a young professional. When I hear that term, I don't know that it's always relatable and so, um, going through the summit and some other things within a rotary, right? I realize that it is totally relatable. It's just how we all kind of internally um, take on that title. So let me get started on the slides here. Um, I think everyone is already muted, so thank you. We can definitely um, have an open conversation. I can't necessarily see the chat box because I'm sharing my screen. So if Bill or Desiree um, see some questions, please feel free to shout those out um, and use the chat box. Um, but one of the questions that I really like to start with is, right, like, how were you introduced to Rotary? And as a young person, I think, and not only as a young person, but I think as everybody, that's a huge takeaway, what your first um, introduction to Rotary is, and whether that be a service project, whether that be a club meeting, whether that be a social, right, everyone's first introduction to Rotary is important because how they feel there, how they um, are treated there, the presence of your club is how they're going to walk away from that. And that's going to determine whether they come back, whether they're intrigued, whether they find some value in that. Um, so I just, I think it's important for everybody to kind of think about how you were first introduced to Rotary, right? And what that felt like. Um, and so, like I said, I had kind of meant for this to be interactive. So I don't, I don't know if anybody wants to share, right, how they were first introduced to Rotary. Rotary. I will share that um, Gary PV was the president at the time. Um, we're really good family friends. He invited me to his first meeting as president uh, because those are always really special and exciting. Um, I went, and I'm sure Desiree can attest to this. I never left. Um, I didn't intend on joining. I didn't intend on staying, um, but there was something about that excitement and um, everything going on that drew me back every Friday, right? And for those of you who don't know, Point West meets at 7 a.m. right and early Friday morning. So, um, right, it had to have been something impactful for me to get up extra early on Fridays, right, to go um, to this club. So. I think there's something to be said about that. Um, I am a lifetime Girl Scout, so I don't know immediately when I was first introduced if it was the attraction to community service, if it was the fellowship. I, I cannot tell you at this moment what it was, but it was something that drew me back week after week. And I actually did not join until October. 
So I had gone from July till October every Friday um, and just thought this was the best time. I also had a lot of ideas and I also was like, hey, do you guys do this? Have you thought about that? And week after week, everyone tried to, you know, get me to join. Um, and it wasn't until I felt the time was right for me. So, um, right, if we all think about like how we were first introduced to Rotary, I think that can also help us figure out how to attract people. Um, I, Bill, do you wanna share as another young person on here, like your first introduction to Rotary? I, I don't know that I qualify as a young person, but I'll, I'll talk about <laughs> how I got introduced to Rotary. I, I was part of a business networking group and I was part of the Chamber of Commerce in Rockland. And I met other attorneys who told me, you have to join Rotary. And I actually visited two or three clubs um, and thought, this isn't for me. This isn't for me. It was a bunch of, I'm going to be blunt, a bunch of old guys sitting around talking and I didn't feel like I fit in. And so it wasn't until I went to a club where there was more of a balance, you know, uh, younger people, men and women, people of different races, different professions that I was like, oh, I see what they're doing. I get what Rotary's about. And that's how I joined. Thanks for sharing. So, right, like how, um, people's first introduction to it, I think, is huge, whether at any age, but right, especially as a young person, there has to be something that attracts them. Um, I know, right, I don't, like I said, I don't work for myself, so I don't have the flexibility of being able to um, set my own schedule. So having something that fit my needs was great. Also, not being pressured into joining. I mean, I was asked every week, right? If it, and there's a difference between asking and like hounding someone. Um, and so, like I said, I went in July and didn't join until October. Um, so I, I think there is something to be said about letting people kind of find their own path and figure out what best fits their needs. Um, which kind of goes into like my next slide, right? Like this was huge when I went to the Young Professional Summit is asking people, why did you join? Right? Because everyone's why did you join is totally different than why did you stay? So I've actually done this service poll within our club um, with our members who are under 50, right? So the, the why did you join is pretty um, typical, right? I joined for business. I joined to give back to my community. I joined um, because it was a networking group. I joined because my friends were in it. I joined because I was asked. Um, but the why did you stay is the important part, um, right? Because that's what really connects people. So I have found that when you ask the, why did you stay? It totally varies. It could be because this is the best thing in my week. It could be because of the fellowship. It could be because I didn't know Rotary did all these things. It could be, I didn't know these things about my community and now I'm totally all about it, right? So um, I actually think this is kind of a fun little exercise and would love to do it with everybody on the call right now. Um, so if you want to answer, why did you stay? Right, um, we can, I can't see the screen, so we can kind of go popcorn style, but um, we can kind of go from there if anyone wants to start. Pop, popcorn style, I haven't heard that one before. I work I'll in education, you know, that's all we talk about now that we're on Zoom. I'll, popcorn I'll just style. be real brief in 15 seconds. Uh, I joined, uh, first learned about Rotary from my older brother. So, you know, since I was younger of the subset, uh, and then uh, when I moved to Colorado Hills, I didn't know anybody. So my kids, I was 42, 43 years old, I think. And my kids were already in high school or out of high school because we had our children when we were young and married. Uh, and so it was just to meet people. And still to stay, it's still to meet people. But how and why I meet people is what's really changed. I just wanted to meet people in my own community. And now I get the chance to meet incredible people from all over the world. So I think it's kind of the same and yet different. So uh, I also think I saw Morgan might have unmuted. So uh, I, I don't want to take up too much time. I'm not on the younger side of young professionals. I'm on the uh, getting the, look. when's my retirement coming age. So Morgan, do you want to add to the conversation? Yeah, um, I was going to say, I haven't been an official uh, Rotarian for too long, I, uh, and it was all during um, COVID, really. Um, I had a few meetings before COVID, but uh, then was 
sort of formally initiated end of October time. Um, but I would say why I kept coming back to meetings throughout kind of the the pandemic and prior to that was just um, you kind of touched on this, like meeting people of, as a young professional, um, meeting groups and meeting people, individuals that I wouldn't normally interact with is kind of a, a big reason why I decided to continue with Rotary and going to meetings um, because I normally interact with people my age, uh, which I guess makes sense. So I think this has really given me an opportunity to meet other members of my community that do incredible work. And what club are you with? Uh, Pocket Greenhaven. Oh, perfect. Anybody else wanna share? Hi everybody, Frank Edver Helly here. Uh, so I joined Rotary as a Chamber of Commerce member. I, I played the circuit, you know, business networking and stuff, but I really joined Rotary because I wanted a place where I didn't have to talk about business first. I wanted the fellowship, I wanted the friendship, and I wanted to sit around and have lunch and be a normal human being instead of uh, just a on point for what I was doing all day. Um, so I shopped around many clubs and I looked at, you know, where do I want to spend my time? Where do I want to spend my money? And who's welcoming and Who's going to look at me just as a dues paying member or uh, now, you know, as a metric, because I am usually the youngest person in the room. Um, the club that I joined South Placer, I, yeah, I'm still the youngest person in the room, but they look at me more as a friend and more as a, a person that they can interact with instead of just talk at. So that's why I stay with Rotary. And of course, I'm, I haven't been vocal enough about this. I think there's a lot of growth and a lot of potential in changing the way Rotary interacts with younger people. And I hate that term because we're all human beings, but what you have to offer and what you have to value, it doesn't matter what age you are. I mean, I learn stuff every day from people I've known for many, many years. And I think if we teach that to each other and make Rotary more of a place where we can share how we think and not just say why we think that way or what we think, you know, maybe, maybe there's a gap that needs to be filled. So as a younger professional looking for new ways and innovative ways to do things, I think Rotary is that, that sort of catch all that, you know, you can try things out, you can be your best person, you could be maybe a little bit risky, and you'll get instant feedback from respected people of the community who have been there, done that, and you get a lot of coaching and mentorship in return for that. So that's why I'm here. Thanks, Frank. Anybody else want to share? I'll sort of second what Frank said. The reason I stay is because of community. Um, similarly, you know, like being referred there by people from a business perspective and finding that there were people who were interested in bigger things, who were doing things in the community, who talked about more than just how can we feed our own bottom line and bring in business. That was huge. That was huge. And um, that, you know, that and the friendships that I've made along the way are the reason I've stayed. Perfect, which is all kind of different, right, to some degree than why did you join if your focus was business driven, right? Now you're staying because of the relationships and connections that you've built. Um, I will also say that, um, yes, had I not joined Rotary, I would not know all the people I know. And, um, right, I do not ever hesitate reaching out to somebody in my club when I need something, right? We all have, everyone has their specialties and instead of going through, and I will say this, a phone book, right? Or searching online for somebody who has the skill set, right? It is a really neat tool to be able to reach out to the people that you know and trust and be able to have, you know, access to them um, almost, you know, when you need it and know that they're gonna, that they're trustworthy and things will happen. Um, so thank you everyone for sharing. Um, I find that that's really an important question to ask. We had done that at the Young Professional Summit and, um, you know, we're just blown away by the why did you stay? And that's kind of what, right, we, what keeps people here. And we need to keep that in mind instead of just growing our numbers, um, right? What is keeping people here and keeping them involved and active? Um, so 
we kind of wanted to just talk about, you know, if anyone's currently active in other civic or charitable organizations, right? That's, that's huge, right? Like why, how do you decide that Rotary is something that you are involved in and give your time and energy to? Um, because we're trying to find that balance and we're trying to figure out how to attract young people and get them to stay, right? So what is the attraction? If you are on other boards, right? What is the difference, right? Is it because those boards um, don't have a fee structure? Is it because those boards only have, you know, maybe um, 10 hours of service time throughout the year? Is it, you know, what we're kind of looking at, like I said, I wanted this to be kind of a conversation piece as well, but what um, other organizations are people involved in? And then what is also keeping you in Rotary and how we can kind of find that balance for younger people? I will say that I know that time and money um, is an issue for a lot of younger people. That's, you know, why a lot of my friends that I grew up with and went to college with um, aren't able to join. They're not, you know, they've got kids all in elementary school. They, you know, can't afford Rotary. Um, so, right, if you're involved in other organizations, why are you involved in them? And then what is the offset to Rotary? If anybody, I mean, I know that's a really loaded question. I can see people thinking. Um, yeah, I, I'm involved in other um, organizations um, locally. Um, I think the draw to Rotary for me is that there's a lot of varied opportunities to get involved with other nonprofits. So Rotary itself is an organization that supports other organizations. And um, my club in particular, I mean, and this might go for everyone's club, but if we have an idea of, hey, I know this really great nonprofit that's doing this thing locally, like we can as a group support that. Um, so it's kind of like a catalyst to a lot of different opportunities. Um, so that's why Rotary is um, particularly interesting to me and why I'm also involved in Rotary in addition to the other nonprofit that I support. Um, and then what was the other part of that question? There was something else I feel like I'm missing. I was just asking if it right if it's kind of an offset of time and money versus time and money in Rotary, right? Like we all have to decide where you're spending your time and your money. Um, and so are you involved in these other organizations because it leads to Rotary and there's a connection, or because it's not fee based, or because um, you don't feel like Rotary is as expensive as sometimes I feel like we make it sound. Yeah, I don't think Rotary, and I, I don't know if it's my club in particular, I don't think the 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 dues are um, impossible for what we what we get out of it, especially. So that's not um, a big issue for me. Um, so yeah, I don't think I can speak to that in particular. Thank you for sharing. Frank, are you still thinking or did you want to say something? Oh, I can say, I just don't let somebody else talk. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I am part of many other organizations, uh, Rotary being the last thing that I joined. And because of that reason, you know, there's only so much time in the day. And I've committed to, I'd say about 30% of my time to charitable, nonprofit field and 70%, obviously, to for-profit stuff. Um, this place has given me the leadership platform, you know, obviously being president, I've been able to open some doors, which has helped me grow my uh, experience in other nonprofit board service, you know, where they need somebody who has some experience, where else are you going to get it, you know, and I feel Rotary is that place where, where I got it as the youngest, you know, being younger than everybody else, this, I didn't do things in college, I didn't join clubs in college, I just, I was doing other things in college, I guess, trying to live and work my way through it. So I didn't have time for anything back then. Now I have more time with my business. I'm fortunate enough to be able to do stuff like this. I picked the one at noon because I don't get up early, you know, but the, yeah. And as far as the money perspective, I mean, what you put in is what you get out, you know? So the dues itself is, I, I think it's negligible because you're paying for lunch, basically. In our case, we're, you know, we're paying for our meal. And then all the other donations and everything above and beyond with that is not required, but obviously it's encouraged. Other organizations, especially nonprofit boards, I mean, there's a minimum commitment to be on the board. And some of those are you know, $2,500 a year uh, and you're roped in for four years in, in some cases. So 
I think Rotary fills a need that, you know, younger people could get involved with this maybe first. I did it backwards. I got involved with this last, but I think this would be a great place to get involved in first because like Morgan said, you can get to network and meet people and people maybe might extend an opportunity or open a door to something like, hey, wow, I didn't know that existed. And, or I know that existed, but I don't know how to get in touch with the people who run that place. And I spent many years running around the chamber circuit. I'm on boards and committees with them as well. Maybe they came through the chamber 15 years ago and now they're part of Rotary. So it seems like the, you know, from a, another club that I'm part of as well, another sort of personal club, that's a lifelong thing. And Rotary, I feel is in that same bucket as well. This is a lifelong choice that is above and beyond business. Even when you retire, you can be a Rotarian. Even if you're not prospecting for clients, you have a, a great place to go and hang out. So it fits that, that third place need, like I talk about, you know, you have your home life, you have your work life, and then this is that third place. So thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wanna share? I can only see so many people on my screen, so. Um... Frank, you just happen to be on my screen, which is why I called on you. Why am I me? Did anybody else want to share? Okay. Uh, thanks, Desiree. Thanks for the cue, because I can't see. <laughs> so kind of leads us into this next question, right? What is Rotary's uh, value proposition for you personally and or professionally that keeps you involved given the financial and time commitment? So we kind of have touched on that. But I think this is really important as you start talking to new members, as you start talking to young members, figuring out right what the value proposition is and figuring out how that aligns with what they want. Um, I will say that, right, if it's something that is attractive to the person, um, I, I know I did not think I could afford Rotary um, when I first joined based on, you know, the overall price factor. Um, of how we lay out the costs for our year within our club. Um, and right when you look at it for the first time, it's huge. It's it's not just your weekly breakfast. It's not just, right, like a donation here. It, it, it's a chunk of change. So, right, figuring out um, what keeps people coming back, right? And then I figured out that we have our own foundation. We also give to the International Foundation that there's lots of different opportunities and right there, I think right people will figure out a way to be able to make it work financially for them if there's some value proposition in it, um, right? Whether that means I stopped going to Starbucks, right? Like Friday mornings before going to Rotary so I could, right? Like save my money to do that. Not that I have, I don't want anyone to think that I uh, stopped going to Starbucks, but um, right, there's, there's just ways to think about it. Um, I know that sometimes when we are talking with our younger members about joining, um, right? And the financial commitment piece is huge because we need to be able to make sure that, right, that they're able to commit to that. Um, but I think there are different ways of going about approaching that conversation, right? So if you can kind of hook them in on like the service piece, you can hook them in on the value proposition, you can kind of figure out what they um, want to get involved with. I think the next step of presenting the financial piece is a much easier, um, conversation than having the financial conversation first without really knowing where they would fit in and or what they're interested in doing. If I'm wrong, somebody please shout out. Um. <laughs> hey, Samantha, I'd just like to add to that. I think your comment about find out what they want. Um, you may try to set maybe to you a value is that Rotary is like family to you. And you may try to sell that to somebody coming into the club younger or or not so young and they go i don't i'm not here for friends or family i've got that i'm here to do something else or this is why i'm joining so i think finding out from a prospective member why they're interested is really important and i thought that was a good comment on your part that we really need to look at that what may be right for us and what draws us to rotary may not be the same thing that draws somebody else Absolutely. I mean, I think there's all right. All of us, even on this call are here for different reasons, right? I mean, we might stay for the same reasons and some of us might have joined for the same reasons, but our own personal proposition right, for that value is different. And it can change as well as you move clubs or as you move businesses, as you move up in leadership. Um, right. I think the scope of each of our clubs is very different because once you expand outside your club and start doing stuff within the district, 
right? That scope of what we reach and that bandwidth is huge, right? And if that's what somebody's really interested in, um, right, talking about those things, right, that it's not just your club, that we are right part of this organization. And I know a lot of times we talk about our clubs and then it being international, right? But there's a lot of different steps in between those pieces with a lot of growth and leadership ability um, that people could really, if that's what they're looking for, right, that's also a way to engage and, um, and attract some of those people. Um, so my next question is, where do you see yourself in five years with regard to your Rotary Club and this district, right? We are here because we want to support the young professionals in our districts and in our clubs. Um, Desiree and I have some plans this year of doing some stuff with young professionals, um, having some sort of summit, having some sort of get together. I know it's been, um, informal in the past, um, but we're looking at kind of bringing it back, having more of a network group. I personally love the fact that, you know, once you get to know people outside of your club and in the district, you have this whole new connection. And right, I've always said, I would love to have kids and raise them with people the same age as me, right? So I'm not in a club where um, people are having babies. So, right, I'm in a club where people are having grandkids. Um, and so, you know, I want to be able to call somebody and say, hey, can I drop my five year old off because I've got to go do this. Right. And so when you have that network, um, I think it's really important. So I really thank Desiree for her support in this. Um, but I kind of want to know where people see themselves in five years and obviously in different club levels. Right. We've all had different leadership experiences. I've been in my club for eight years, been on the board, um, have not been president. Right, but Frank has been in less than eight years and has been president and um, right. Has, so we just all have different levels of um, experiences and um, right. That could change how people see themselves within five years within right our clubs and our district. So I'd be interested to hear um, from some people where they see themselves, where they would like to see um, where they'd like to see themselves. Right, if you have plans on moving up within the district, if you have plans on um you know growing your club like whatever that kind of looks like because we're here to support you and also see that that happens this year that's really what this is you know this is open conversation because um i'd love to see that happen i know bill as a membership uh chair would love to see some some of that happen i know desiree who supports both of us would love to see that happen um so i'm open to having these conversations well i could start it off with a complaint I was looking to network with all the clubs in the district this year, but because of, you know, the wonderful thing that happened, I get to sit on Zoom. So I say that in a positive way because that's inspired me to stick around within the leadership realm and, you know, maybe district governors in my future. So that way I can actually visit each and every individual club and get to continue to make my difference that I, I so passionately speak about. Um, I don't know, I haven't gotten impeached yet. I got 12 weeks left, so we'll see what happens. I think you have less than 12 weeks. Is it? How many weeks? And <laughs> not that I'm say, counting, Bill. It's almost you know. May. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it's still March of last year. So, you, oh, you and the one that? thing I think, real quick, I forgot to mention. So, in regard to the comment you just made, Samantha, I've experienced in leadership in other places. So, it was natural for me to come in and be like, hey, you're all doing this wrong. Can I give it a try? Um, <laughs> but had I not had any experience with leadership in other in the nonprofit realm in my own business, for example, then yeah, this would be the perfect place to get your wings really to to have a lot of people who've been there before you pave the way and give you that opportunity that you know working in corporate America, you might not get that. You might not get that because of certain metrics and standards that don't fit the bill because you know you're competing against 500 other candidates, whatever it might be. Service clubs have that opportunity. Rotary specifically has that opportunity. So, yeah, thanks. Bill, Morgan, anyone want to share like where you see yourself in five years? Um, well, five years seems a long way away. Um, I, I, I think I only have two months left <laughs> as president. And so, <laughs> That's why when Frank made that comment, I was like, wait, how many more meetings am I planning? What's happening? Um, um, 
I honestly, I am looking forward to the passport concept and playing around with what we can be as a club. I like the flexibility that we have. I like that meals and everything included, we're $250 a year and that um, we give flexibility to people who may not um, normally think they can make the time commitment to go to meetings every week. Um, um, I'm hoping to play around with that. I had a lot of ideas coming into the year about what that was going to look like and not many of them materialized <laughs> but i'll try to implement them with the the next president and see where we can go samantha yeah as, a, as an i hate to say this old professional um, <laughs> <laughs> i would in five years i would like to be mentoring <clears throat> a whole new wave of members uh and bring um keep our club alive we're going to hit 100 years and i i don't know that we're going to go much beyond that unless we get some new younger people we do have two young members that are in the, just turned 30 uh, but getting them engaged has been particularly hard during the, the pandemic they joined because they went to a district conference and had a wonderful time and experience at the conference and were very enthused. Uh, they wanted to immediately do community service and they did, but then when we went into the shutdown mode and they could not, and we, you know, it took several months before we could figure out things that we could do uh, that, you know, they could do hands on. Um, so then they kind of got wrapped up in their, in their business life. But I'd like to figure out how to get them back in um, and coming and attending the meetings. Um, and we're still Zoom um, and probably will be for a little bit longer. Yeah, and I think that's going to be the biggest challenge across the board. I mean, I don't know, right? I, I don't think it matters what age you are. Um, I think Zoom has a lot of um, really nice perks, right? And not that I want to be on Zoom either. Um, but I will say, right, I mean, we're still meeting on Zoom every Friday, um, and I find myself in my office most Friday mornings listening, right, on Zoom, um, and I also have yet to go out to a club event, um, because I have been slammed at work, and I think that's, that is the challenge of being younger, at least for me, not owning my own business, right, having uh, a job that I can't just kind of come and go, um, and set my own hours that it was really, really structured pre-pandemic, right? Like everybody in my office knew I wasn't gonna come in until 10 o'clock on Fridays, right? Because I had Rotary. And now because everything is on Zoom, I think everyone in my office has forgotten that, right? Things are still happening. I mean, right, our work life has exploded um, and not necessarily in a good way, but um, it, right? Like I think people forget that life happens, right? And that other things are still happening. Right. So I did mention, oh, I sell rotary. And somebody said, oh my gosh, you do? Have you been doing that all year? Yeah. Just because like, right, like the world stopped doesn't mean like rotary had stopped, right? Like we've pivoted and we've transitioned. I will say I really find um, right that balance of having some ways that young people can still engage, right? So whether that means you go like Zoom two weeks, in person two weeks, right? And still offering that flexibility for them to still be engaged. Um, I know right firsthand that if you're asked to lead a service committee or write a function, um, right, that's another way to get people a little more engaged. Um, and I do know, I do recognize it will be hard coming out of the pandemic, like I said, for everyone. I think there's a lot of uh, comfort in being on Zoom, um, especially for a club our size, right? We can't just all, 120 of us go back to a facility um, tomorrow, right? So figuring out, right, and maybe I would say check with them, right? Just say, hey, you know, I know we're looking at coming back to in-person, right? What would help make it easier for you to return with us? You know, and hey, we're looking at doing X, Y, and Z. Um, are you interested in leading one of those things? I will say, don't be afraid to ask the young people in your club to help or for their advice. I always found it super helpful that, um, and I, right, it's also nice that people want to know your opinion, right? I think so often a lot of things in Rotary just happen because they've always happened. 
right? Like, well, this is what we've done and not necessarily like, this is what we've done. So we will always do it this way. But, um, right. Like now that we're coming out of a pandemic and out of a time we've never been through, I think it's important to also engage everybody on that level, right? Because everybody has different suggestions and ideas and engaging the younger people on that level could be huge, right? It could be like one of them could say, hey, you know, I think we should do split, so hybrid, right? And hey, let me help you set up the technology for that, right? So um, I think there's also hidden skill sets in that. Um, we started a Zoom rotation for people in our club hosting the Zoom every week. There are people who I never thought um, would want to do that have helped all year long, right? Everyone's on a two week rotation and it is, it's fabulous, right? But it's also learning a new skill. So we've set it up so there's an experienced person with a new person. So um, they're together one week and then the following week, it's the new person with another person, right? So everyone has that chance. And so, right, that could be something that you ask your younger members, hey, we're gonna start doing it this way. Um, you know, would you like to help with this, right? And even if they say, oh, I don't know how to, it's like, we've got someone who can help train you, right? So um, that, those would be my suggestions. Thanks. Not sure if anybody else wanted to, to talk, but the next part kind of goes into my next slide. So um, we really want to know what we could do as, a, as the district uh, more or less of to make Rotary more appealing to young professionals like yourself, um, right? And I know that's why a lot of you were on here trying to figure out how to get young people, right? So, um, I would also suggest as we start doing service events, inviting those people, right? Inviting, having members of your club bring their kids and invite their friends, right? As we start re-entering, um, hopefully our new normal, which will go back to real normal, um, right? Start inviting those people out, right? If I'm out and somebody's asked me to go do a community service project, I am probably hands down to do it. But it, then if I know that that leads to Rotary and somebody's talking about the great experience they have, I might ask what it's Rotary. I might ask to go to a club meeting, right? You never know where that kind of next step leads. Um, but this is where we kind of want to know what we could do as a district to um, make Rotary more appealing. We're open to any and all suggestions that are out there. Well, I, I'm going to jump right in because you said get back to normal. And I don't think we need to go back to normal. I think we need to break the idea of what normal is. I think something like this that allows us at seven to get together where I can you know, be feeding my kids dinner and jump in here for an hour and participate and then go on to the next thing is brilliant and so time-saving that I'm not planning on getting rid of the Zoom connectivity as we move forward. We have a member who's a physician in Maine and she joined last year with the thought that, well, maybe she'd make one meeting or two a year because her brother is a pharmacist here. But she's made every single meeting and our socials online because she can work with her schedule. And even though it's kind of late, she can make a meeting at 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. I, I don't think we go back to normal. I think we make a decision that we're going to embrace what has worked and just integrate it into the things that were working before. But Bill, I think I, I agree with you that um, Zoom has allowed us all opportunities to meet in ways that makes it easier for many people. And I agree that we need to continue looking at ways to do that moving forward. But I'm gonna go back to Joanne's comment about the people, the young members that you got in your club just before, and they enjoyed working on the service projects. And obviously we don't wanna do a lot of service projects on Zoom. And I think that's where you re-engage people. We've gotta engage not just our younger members, but those, those longer term members that maybe you haven't seen at the meetings that wanna do the hands-on projects. And I know I introduced a gal in her late thirties to Rotary, she joined just, I mean, her, last in-person meeting was her induction meeting and then they went you know COVID hit and she's like kind of floundering because her idea was I want to go do service and I want to do it in a group of people that are like-minded and 
you know, it's now Zoom meetings and she's fine with the Zoom meetings, but I think getting back out and doing some of those service projects, I think is really going to be imperative to getting some re-engagement of our members of all ages. Can I ask, have people dialed back their service projects? Because I'd say that was something my club really pushed this year. And we've done probably more service projects than any year before. Um, our, our volunteer coordinator talked to a whole bunch of local nonprofits. So we've had things basically every week with food pantries, with um, you know, Halloween drives, thank, uh, Thanksgiving, everything. It, it took us a little while to figure it out, Bill, on how we could do <clears throat> some of the things because several members were very, um, immune compromised. And so they were not ready to go out, but we actually like you added more things. Uh, once we got past the first couple of months, we <clears throat> continued to do a lot of the things that we always had. Um, but we did have that little spell in there of when we figured it out that we lost a few, but <clears throat> we're getting them back. And I, I think we'll keep them. I, at least I'm very hopeful of that. Yeah, it's definitely a new normal. Uh, and the definition of normal is going to be different for every club size for quite some time as we kind of adjust to life in a hybrid slash whatever uh, environment. I want to kind of address the question at hand, though. And, you know, active 2030. Uh, it, it's some of its roots are right here in Sacramento. In fact, the international aspect of the whole organization began here in Sacramento. And I think uh, that there's a, 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 you know, Rotary International, of course, Active 2030 is not worldwide. It's, it's uh, really big in throughout the West Coast, though, uh, and, and throughout Canada and Latin America, basically the Western Hemisphere, I would say. With that being said, you know, Rotary Internationals had this Toastmasters push to, you know, to have this partnership with Toastmasters. But what would be preventing our district from have, coming to some sort of partnership or memorandum of understanding or a joint uh, goal of some kind and incorporate, and I don't mean that in the legal uh, business sense, but the uh, help get more active 2030 participation within what Rotary is doing in our district and see where that goes. Because, you know, Samantha, you're a great example of someone who could have easily got to Active 2030 and they do service projects and they have a, a mission in the world and they want to learn and, and do a lot of things as well. But what they're lacking is the active 40, 50 and 60s <laughs> and 70s and beyond. Right. So I think that what they're missing is some of that long term multi generational mentorships. Um, and that works both ways. Uh, uh, the young set is definitely a mentor to the older set when it comes to technology uh, and, and at much deeper levels than that as well. So I would think that maybe those that are in the younger active 2030 age group maybe consider working with Desiree and perhaps myself and others in making a uh, kind of an event fair, not necessarily selling them on Rotary, but just letting them know or coming up with some sort of joint service project as an introductory way of, of meeting each other. Because that is what we really went back to that very first question. Why did you join? And yeah, there was business and networking and all that as well, but everyone's common denominator in that was friendship and fellowship. So I think uh, it might be a very natural progression and we might find that it's easier than we may think to find a local Sacramento area partnership with the Sacramento area act of 2030, which is a pretty good group as I understand it. Thanks Bill for sharing. Yeah, Samantha, do you wanna talk about what, what you've done in our club to help promote that partnership with um. 2030? <laughs> Sure. So yes, Bill, you're right. I easily could have gone to the Active 2030 Club um, and, and said I joined Rotary. Um, but we have, I have several friends in Active 2030 and we have actually done some shared events. Um, we've had a joint meeting. Um, a large part of our club originates from uh, the, the 2030 Club. Um, and so there's a lot of past, uh, past actives in our club. So we've had a joint meeting where we've gotten to know each other, right? Had a social 
Um, and we've started some partnerships. So we've done, uh, we do a joint community service project. Um, and we've actually had some members join our club. I will say the largest challenge with that, um, and not that I don't think it's a great idea, but their club presidents are a six month term, right? So just when we start rolling, um, right, they, their turnover is every six months. So, um, right, figuring out like a time frame for how that works and into their leadership, I think um, would be the biggest challenge, but I think it's great, right? And I think we could do it even more regionally than just um, a few clubs, right? So maybe that's something we put on the calendar is as, right, we post COVID, things start opening back up, um, we have that, or, right, people start inviting them to their meetings. That's really, right, they have evening meetings and lunch meetings. Um, so, right, we're obviously a breakfast club. So one of our meetings we did with them was at their evening meeting. It was an evening social, um, but, you know, it's an easy way, like Phil said, to kind of bridge that connection and have them, right, learn about Rotary. We've had them out at our brew fest as some manpower because they are much younger um, than a lot of members in our club. And so they are the ones able to climb those 10, 20 foot ladders, you know, as our members probably should not be. Um, but right, it's great to have those partnerships and, um, they've come out the last few years for one of her, like I said, brew fest and done the cleanup crew, right? At the end of the day, when your club puts on a huge event, right? Nobody wants to stick around for two hours and clean up. Um, so right. Connecting with them, I think is a great idea. Um, being part of their, some of their service projects, I think is huge. They do one called comfort cases. And so we, um, pledge every year to be a comfort case. A donor and then go help stuff these comfort cases, which are essentially um, suitcases for um, foster kids. Um, right, so there's definitely ways to give back and that's a project that we would not have ever come up with or done, our, done on our own. So that's a partnership that every year when they are getting ready to do it, they involve us in it. Um, so yes, I would encourage you to reach out, like I said, they're their president terms though are every six months. So there is also a woman's active 2030 club. They're the 1032 club. So um, unlike Rotary, they are, there's a men's club and a woman's club um, and both uh, interact with each other. And then like both have done mixers with us on a larger scale. So great idea, Bill. Um, I'm curious to see if Jamie and or Morgan have any input as to what the district could do more or less of to make Rotary more appealing to young professionals like yourself. Yeah, hi, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm late. I just, I got out of work late um, and I'm almost to my destination and I'll be done driving. Um, I I think that the, like for me, the it's like square one awareness um, and how do we just let people know that there, there is even a place for young people in Rotary? Because to me in my interactions with people, the, 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 the thinking is that Rotary And so I say, oh, no, no, it's for people of all ages. It's for people with the heart of service. Um, so to me, thinking on a district level, I'd love to see ways just to create more awareness in our community about young people in Rotary. Um, Amy, you might be frozen. I know you're driving, so I'm not sure um, if, you're, if you're frozen. Kind of looks that way. She must be right there between cell towers. In the tunnel. Okay, well, we can come back to you, Jamie, because we'd love to see more of that. But Morgan, did you want to jump on? Yeah, um, so I kind of knew about Rotary, which is, I knew about Rotary because of my, as a high schooler, I was actually, a, I was in Key Club, so it would make sense for me to be more of like a Kiwanis, but I, I think the younger, like starting younger, um, and that gave me an idea of what service groups like Kiwanis and, and Rotary are. I think starting young, even if they're not going to join right out of high school, middle school or high school, because then they might come back to it 10 years later. And so I think that familiarity is something that is really helpful. Um, so I knew that Rotary had younger members and just didn't know that I wanted to join until a younger member asked me to join or asked me to come to meetings. 
Um, so I think that's something starting young, getting that type of information out there. And then I feel like like our club we're, we're small but I feel like we do a really good job because we do like social events like one of the first events I went to was at a brewery and for a, a, at the time I think I was 28 like last year I was like yeah this is awesome like I'm at a brewery with all these people that I, I just met or whatever um so I think those like social events really help me feel a little bit more comfortable and like this is a great place that I would I you know I want to hang out with these people and they have similar interests regardless of age um as far as like serving the community. Uh, but yeah, I think just more word of mouth is, is something. Um, and I think the longevity of Rotary so that you can start at any age and be in it past like an active 20, 30, obviously you age out, you turn out, whatever. With Rotary, starting very young, you have so much opportunity to take on a leadership role. You have so many opportunities to be involved with uh, the club really forever. Um, so I think that is something that Rotary has that other organizations don't necessarily have. Thanks, Morgan. There you go, Bill. That's why I joined at a young age. So I could, you know, not age out. <laughs> I, I got a quick comment. I'm part of another organization that has like a sort of pathways program, you know, so there's a youth group that specifically gears you up towards the adult group. And something that our club has talked about because we have Sierra College and William Jessup in our town is saying, hey, what if we put together a sponsorship? So we have a member of our club foot the bill or we create a, a scholarship program, something for a younger member to take part of. Hey, give it a try for six months. You know, your dues are free or they're sponsored by somebody else. If you like it, great. We'll work with you on, on what's the cost or what's the time commitment. So some of those things that we're talking about in our club when we start to reopen, so I think district maybe, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, scholarship program. As we gave you the thumbs up, I don't know. Yeah, I kind of want to second that there's a scholarship um, that I am a, another organization that I'm a part of and I was applying to their scholarship program and one of the terms I guess of the scholarship is that you will be an ambassador for the organization for you know whatever time period it is and to me I'm like well you're giving me money for my education like heck yes I'll be an ambassador for you um and it's it's just you know it's a, it's a relatively small time commitment and I think it just makes me like that organization even more. Um, so I second that. I think that's a great idea. I, I like tying the um, scholarship funds to being the ambassador. Uh, my, my concern always is when you pay for something for somebody else, if they don't have skin in the game, sometimes they don't have the same level of interest. But if you, if you look at it as, you know, we're looking for you to be an ambassador as well, I like that. And thanks, Morgan, for that um, add-on. And Frank, great idea. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I think the yeah. vetting process, I mean, similar, like I said, from my other organization, there's a pretty extensive vetting process to make sure. I mean, of course, you don't know until you know, but... I concur with all that. Appreciate it. I know the zone 33, 34, which is East Coast, did uh, some research in uh, things like is joined for six months free and whatnot. And they found that it's not generally very successful because eventually that free runs out and you have to start paying for it. And you still may not be in a position to do that. So just the word of the wise there, we're running up against the top of the hour, which means we actually went past our 45 minutes, which is good because this has been really entertaining and I mean that on a learning uh, thing, not that I've been laughing at anybody except myself and occasionally Bill Bowen. Uh, but Samantha, do you have uh, uh, any uh, another slide or something? We'll have to wrap this up in just a few more minutes. Um, just my contact oh, yeah. information. Amy's back. Just my contact information. More than happy to talk with anybody um, more in depth about this, uh, bounce any ideas off of each other. Um, I will say back to the scholarship um, idea, I really think it would be um, beneficial to our district if we offered some of that to uh, some of our larger events, right? Like maybe the district conference. So, right, maybe we have younger members who can afford to go to all your stuff within your club. 
um, and all they've ever heard about is a district conference. And I will say, I, I've been to them all since I've been in Rotary, um, and they are as fun as people make them sound, right? So if I have to miss one, I'm really kind of disappointed. But I also know that it's a huge expense, right? We're all paying for a hotel room for two nights. You're paying the conference fee. You're paying the uh, food uh, for your you know, meals. So maybe if there was some way to incorporate some of that, right? Because you already know that these people are in it, right? But for having them experience something outside of their club um, that's district-wide, I think would be hugely beneficial. So um, I did just want to thank everybody for their time tonight. I hope you found this informative. Um, thank you everybody for sharing. Uh, like I said, there's my contact information, more than happy to have conversations with people. Um, and for the young people on the call, right, there, there are plans to get together, meet other young people in the district. And whether that be hybrid, in person, on Zoom, all the above, um, look for some information coming from me um, in the near future. Awesome. So thanks, Bill, for keeping me on track and uh, Desiree for joining us. If there aren't any other questions, um, I can, I'd can i say we can wrap it up. Great, Thank Samantha. You. Be sure you copy the chat because there are a, 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 basically everyone who's a young professional on here wants to get together again. So yeah, uh, yeah. Don't, don't miss out on, on uh, that contact information before uh, we log off. But uh, thanks, everybody. I can't see it. Can you um, copy it for me and email it to me?